Welcome to Last Set News. My name is Rob, and there are good news abound. We've got some pretty historical agreements, and then also I think the markets are doing pretty good. So what I'm talking about is that uh, today it is February 7th. It's almost 3 p.m. Puerto Rico time. So that's 2 p.m. Eastern time. And a uh, friend of the show, Jerome Powell, just came out and gave a little press conference. And after that 25 basis points hike, which we all saw coming, the market did pretty good. And then uh, during the uh, actual press conference, Fed Chair Jerome Powell re reiterated that continued interest rate increases will be appropriate and that the disinflationary process has begun. That's good. That means inflation's coming down. That's what we want to see. And hopefully they can make some changes. Not that they're going to pivot right away, but that's good news. And then lastly, Powell explained that he wasn't too concerned with one potentially outlier month of jobs data. And we actually saw that the unemployment rate uh, actually went down. So that is a little bit uh, concerning news. But in all honesty, the market responded not too bad. In the last 24 hours, it's like there was a big dip or a huge uh, increase. We're pretty stable, which is quite interesting in the crypto market. And across the board, you can just see over even like seven days, 4.7% for Ethereum. And looks like just a little bit of a, of a pullback in the last 24 hours. But last hour, looking pretty good. So who knows where this all lead to us. But I will say this. These are the stories that I care about because this just means that our section is recovering. Gemini and Genesis reached a hundred million agreement over the EARN program. If you've been watching my channel for any time, you know I'm very concerned about contagion, which was happening with FTX and would it bring down DCG and Grayscale and Genesis is already affected. And now here we are with Genesis and Gemini coming to a resolution. Here's what we got. Cameron Winklevoss announced the agreement on Twitter. Of course, why not? Today, a Gemini reached an agreement with the principal with Genesis Global Capital LLC. If you don't know, Global Capital or Genesis is one of the four subsidiaries of Digital Currency Group, one of those being Coindesk, also Foundry, the largest Bitcoin mining operation on the planet. And then, of course, we've got Genesis and uh, Grayscale, uh, which uh, is the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust. And I was concerned that these things would have contagion but I thought if they could just deal with this, maybe we'll have a clear landing. So Gemini will contribute up to 100 million more for earned users. The terms of the agreement with DCG includes the sale of Genesis Global Trading. So one does bite the dust, but not everything. And I'll take a little bit of a, of a, of a cut in the arm, then lose the whole body. Further, DCG will exchange 1.1 billion notes due in 2032 for convertible preferred stock and refinancing its existing 2023 term loans in two tranches made payable to creditors with an aggregate total value of approximately 500 million. So look, to me, this is a huge win. I thought this would uh, spiral out and be something huge, and it's not. So I'm glad this is where it is. Let me know what you think about that in the comment section. And also, I just got an email this morning. Dear Robbie. Voyager went into agreement with Binance US. Yes, we know they did not too long ago, January 10th or somewhere around there. On January 10th, Voyager received bankruptcy court approval to solicit votes from creditors on the plan. We believe it presents the fastest path to returning the largest portion of cryptocurrency to you. Look, I can't sway you if there's a, a voting process or what it's going to be, but I'm going to say right now, I'm voting for this. I'm out. I'm tired of this stuff. I'm tired of this nonsense. Let's just go and do this because we're still in a bear market. Give me back my funds so I can reinvest in the smart ways, not to deal with this nonsense. You can do whatever you want to do. Let me tell you the way I'm voting. I'm out. Done. So to gain access to your crypto distributions, as soon as they are made available, start the process of connecting your existing Voyager account with a new Binance.us account. If you opt in, your account data will transfer to Binance US prior to the closing of the proposed transaction. Well, that's good if you want to opt in. What if we want to opt out? Well, if you want to opt uh, or if you choose not to opt in, then you're opting out, your data will still be transferred to Binance after the closing of the proposed transaction. So you're going to have it either way, whichever way you want to do it, it's going over to Binance US. And of course, there was a link here to opt in via the Voyager app, which I did not do yet. And there's a reason for that. I'll show you that in a little second which is this, what if I live in Hawaii, New York, Texas, or Vermont? So here's the thing with me, I live in Puerto Rico. Unfortunately, my driver's license is still in Texas and it's very hard to get them to recognize that I'm in Puerto Rico. So I might be a little scrawled in this end, but here's what's gonna happen to me, New York and Vermont 
individual is also why. Binance US is actively working with applicable regulators to obtain money transmission licenses or exemptions unless and until Binance US obtains the, the requisite money transmission license or exemptions Customers in Hawaii, New York, Texas, and Vermont will not receive their crypto, wah, wah, but will instead receive their distribution in fiat, regardless of whether or not such customer opted in to transfer their account information to Binance US. And again, they're going to be taking the actual amount that was on, I believe it was July 5th. So it's not going to be like today. It's going to be back July 5th, 2022, just so you know. I'll take it. I'll take cash, I'll take crypto. It doesn't matter, it's gonna go back into crypto anyhow. And then of course, if you have curiosity or need to talk to somebody, which is fine. As a reminder, Voyages of Restructuring Information line remains available. And here's the number, I linked that in the description. You can go give them a call, tell them what you think. And what happens if the plan is not approved because it's still in flux. It looks like, you know, Binance wants to do this, Voyager wants to do this, but will the, uh, will the, uh, the bankruptcy court allow it? Agreements not closed by April 18th, 2023, subject to a one-month one month extension. The agreement allows Voyager to immediately move to return value to customers. It's important to note that customers will receive a meaningfully higher percentage of crypto with the plan than then would they lose via liquidation. Look, for this one, great. Glad they got it done. That's fantastic. Uh, there's another one that uh, we'll talk about this channel, Celsius. And uh, people say, we don't, we don't want to liquidate. Look, on that one, that plan's not coming. If they told me to liquidate or not, I would definitely liquidate and get that out of there because they still are stuck on this reorganization. I could be wrong, but uh, I don't see that happening. Anyhow, let me just think about that in the comment section. And lastly, more good news. I like this stuff. Is iTrust came out and they said, look, we don't have anything that is on the balance sheet versus off the balance sheet. What do they mean? So, just because of what happened with FTX, everybody has to change their strategies. And they state a regulated chartered trust entity and all assets are off the balance sheet. That is iTrust Capital, off balance. Client accounts are never co-mingled with our business operating funds. Holding client assets off balance means that the assets are not reflecting the company's financial statements and are not used by the company to impact the company's financial ratios or leverage, in other words, Client assets are client assets. So the reason why they do this is because FTX commingled the funds. You guys lost a lot of money. I didn't personally use FTX, I, but uh, it is what it is. And I'm sorry that you, if you lost it, they took your funds and they bought their condos and, and bungalows for their friends and family. And that's where it's at. So sorry. So at least with iTrust, you don't have that issue. And that'll leave me to my last point. If you're looking at an iTrust, it is, of course, a crypto IRA. There's a video I did about a year ago. I should probably update that. But uh, this is how Peter Thiel turned $2,000 into $5 billion. I talk about how he used an IRA, how you can use an IRA. Not that you're going to make $5 billion. Come on, let's be serious. But tax incentive-wise. There's a link in the description. It looks just like this. And you can check out the video itself and decide if that's for you. There's no more monthly fees. They make their fees through what exchanges should do. Well, regular places should do, which is if you're going to trade anything within your Roth IRA account, which again is tax-free, that's where they make their funds. So that is it for today. So look, if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing. Everything we talk about is time sensitive, but that is it for today. I appreciate you stopping by, but that is all. So I will see you guys on the next one.